So the bro second broad model that we're interested in for this chapter is sequencing jobs. Basically, we have a particular work center or a, a machine, and we have a bunch of jobs that need to be processed on that machine or through that work center, and we want to know which order to do them in. So this, uh, a lot of times we're using priority rules instead of actually finding some optimal criterion uh, because it's a pretty difficult problem theoretically. Um, so some of the priority rules that we often use to sequence include first come first served, also called first in first out if you're an accounting person. Uh, SPT for shortest processing time first, so do all the little tiny stuff first, get it out of the way, like check your email, blah 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 blah. Uh, earliest due date first, this is what most of my students do. All right, they look at what's due next and then work on that. And then there's longest processing time first, and here the idea is it's a big job, it's going to take a long time, um, let's start on it because we know it's going to be a difficult job. Uh, there's actually been some good literature in the surgery setting where it's better to do longest processing time first, so open heart surgery kind of stuff. Um, it can mess up other jobs, but... Uh, it's not a bad sequencing rule for sometimes. So now when we do these sequencings, these priority rules, we also are interested in how to measure it. So the different metrics that we're gonna that the book talks about is the average completion time of a job. Now you take the sum of the total flow time and divide by the number of jobs. We have utilization, total job work time divided by the sum of total flow time, average number of jobs in the system. Um, so some of the total flow time divided by total job work time and then the average job lateness total late time divided by number of jobs you can also look at one that the book doesn't talk about is the number of jobs that are late is also an interesting measure so let's look at an example so here we have um, we want to apply the four popular sequencing rules to these five jobs they're interestingly named A, B, C, D, and E we have their processing time in days, so A takes six days to do, B takes two days, C takes eight, D three, E nine. And then the due date, um, day eight, six, 18, 15, and 23. So we're assuming that everything starts now at time zero, and then we wanna work from there. So let's move over to Excel, because in that same Excel worksheet, I have um, an example of this. So I have set up this worksheet um, sequencing EX1 and the next one too. So they can handle a start date of zero starting now. It makes counting a lot easier if you, if you do that or some other start date. Um, so I've also highlighted in like this greenish brown color. I don't know what color that is. Um, the job date, the date received, processing time, and due date. So if you look at all of these, right, uh, I'm assuming they all got received some time a long time ago, right, and it doesn't really help us here. They're processing time and days and their due dates. So that should look just like, except for this date received column, just like what was on the slide. And then from there I can do a start date, the end date, how late it was, its flow time, um, etc. Right. So we see the total processing time for those five jobs, if they none, none of them had to wait for anything, is 28 days. We see doing a first come, first serve. So I, we're assuming that the labels came in A, B, C, D, E, so that, that's the, the order they came in. The total flow time is 77 days. So we get an average. Uh, we can see one, two, three jobs are late, two days, four days, five days. We see that the average lateness is 2.2 .2 days. The utilization is 36.36%, which again, I just take 28 divided by 77. Uh, average jobs in the system is the inverse of that, 77 divided by 28, so 2.75 days. And the average completion time is the average uh, flow time, which is 15.4. And so that's first come, first serve. Um, if we want to do shortest processing time first, then all we have to do is select just the green part, just this part I've highlighted. That's why I highlighted it. Click sort. Yes, it does have a header. And I want to sort by, uh, let's do processing time, and let's do smallest to largest. That'll be shortest processing time first. 
and then it changes the lateness went down the utilization went up average job and system went down average completion time went down so right now it looks like shortest processing time is the is better than first come first serve right. and then we could do longest processing time first so again sort now we it's still on processing time values largest to smallest click OK <clears throat> three day three jobs are late with an average of 9.6 days utilization dropped down to 27 percent average job in the system and average compute compu completion time went up and then the last one that we can look at for sequencing rules is the uh, earliest due date so now we need to change the column to due date and I want to do smallest to largest click OK average lateness drops way down to 1.2 that should not surprise us that's what the, the whole point of doing the earliest due date first priority rule is utilization is pretty good at 41 percent average job in system 2.4 2 and average completion time 13.6 so let's look at a summary of all three, all four of these. So here's the summary of first come, first serve, shortest processing, earliest due date, and longest processing. So we did it slightly different. I did earliest due date before at the end. Right. And so uh, average completion time in days, we want a small number, so shortest processing time wins. Utilization, we generally want a higher number. So again, shortest processing time wins. Average jobs in the system, we want the small number. Uh, shortest processing time wins. And then average lateness, we want a small number. And not surprisingly, earliest due date wins there. All right. So no single rule in this case uh, wins on all four of those metrics. All right. So let's look at... Um, so it doesn't, doesn't excel on all the criteria. It doesn't win on all four. Uh, shortest processing time does well on minimizing flow time and number of jobs in the system, but it moves long jobs to the end, which may result in dissatisfied customers. Think about it. If, you're, if your job takes a longer time, you're probably paying a lot of money. It's something that's very important to you. Um, you might not like having it pushed back. First come, first serve doesn't do especially well or poorly on any criteria, but especially in the service setting, it's perceived as fair by customers. And at earliest, due date minimizes lateness. So that finishes up Chapter 15 and the rest of the course.